Hi, welcome to the final session of the Frappe Developer Training. Um, this is session 10. In this session, we will uh, learn how to create uh, web views for your uh, meetings. So web views are different from the form views which, uh, which happen inside what we call the desk interface. So web views are on your website which is publicly accessible to everybody. And uh, in Frappe, you can create any, uh, you can create web views for any kind of um, any doc types you have in the system. So, in a quick reminder that the best way to utilize these tutorials is actually make uh, alongside the tutorial and pause wherever you want. Uh, if you want help, it is easily available on the forum. You can look at the source for reference and you can also connect with uh, the community on chat. So, let's start the tutorial. To create a web view, uh, we'll have to first add a field whether uh, we'll have a check mark that shows whether the meeting has to be shown on the website so we'll probably just call it show in website so we'll create a field called show in website in um, maybe just below status and uh, we'll, call, we'll create a check field so uh, this check field is show in website uh, will, will tell us whether the meeting uh, whether the meeting has to be shown in the website or not so let's just refresh the page and now we see the show in uh, the website checkbox. Uh, now using this as a tracker, what we'll have to do is uh, we'll have to create generators. Yeah, so we'll have to uh, subclass the meeting class from a class called website generator. So let us look for search for website generator on Google and we, and we can find the uh, but the easiest way is to look at another generator and then just import it from there. So maybe we can look at, um, so we can open the Frappe code and maybe have a look at um, the page when we do that. So for generators, we need to add a couple of more fields. One is the name of the page that appears in the URL and which is usually called page name as a convention. And then we'll have another which will be called as a parent website route. Uh, we'll shortly create that field. So now let's just open the web page uh, as as an example of creating a generator. So in a generator, you uh, you probably you you need to um, you need to define a web a dic a dictionary called website in the class, and then and there you can uh, define the template, uh, which will be a Jinja file that will uh, contain the uh, how how the meeting will be viewed on the web page and um, like I said let's just create a parent website route um, field and then we can default it to meetings so all our meetings will be uh, your site slash meetings slash meeting one and the page name uh, will be the name itself uh, but in lowercase so our naming if you remember is meeting one meeting two meeting three so it will just be meeting slash meeting 25 or whatever it is. And now let's just create, uh, so all templates by uh, by convention are, in, are kept in the templates folder. You can keep them anywhere. The benefit of keeping them in a the templates folder is that if there is another app that wants to have its own rendering of meeting, then if it is defined in that particular template folder, then it will take. So you can override templates too. So in, in, in the web view, just uh, let's quickly write a simple template and just make it appear uh, on, on the URL that, web, that you want to appear. So maybe in the content, we'll just say hello and just see if the content comes up. So we can just quickly open our browser. Yeah, so what we also need to say, we need to define a hook uh, for uh, for website generators. So basically there is a hook called website generator and we say meeting. So so the framework knows that it, it needs to uh, create routes for that particular doc type. So when you reflect, you'll see a show in website button if the page is visible on the website. But now it says the page is missing, so maybe we have not uh, completed the entire loop. Uh, what probably we need to do is uh, 
another, another quickly quick way to see the route has been generated is is that if uh, it shows up in the sitemap. So if you open sitemap XML, it will generate all the ways. So probably what we've forgotten is that we created the show in website uh, check, but we did not check check the show in website button. So now let's just check that and save that. And then uh, again refresh the page. So let's just save it and refresh it. Yeah, so now we have, uh, yeah, so there we go. So we have the content. So let's, um, now let's put some realistic content here. Now let's start uh, showing the content from the document onto the site. So to do that, uh, you can you use Jinja templates. And here we'll quickly uh, define the date and the other properties. Since uh, Frappe uses Bootstrap uh, as its core CSS framework, uh, you can use all Bootstrap classes to do that. And then let's just put date. So yes, so we have date. Uh, you can uh, use the get formatted method, which is a part of the doc, uh, document to return the formatted date. And then maybe we can show from time to time also. And maybe we can format the from, from time to time. Maybe uh, show it on the next line, maybe make it look a bit cleaner. So it is, uh, let, let's see if uh, we can use the strf time function to show the for from time to time. So we are not sure if this might work. Um, let's just use get formatted first. Um, so get formatted shows the second. So uh, what we're looking to do is probably not show the seconds. Uh, in the but in the first cut, let's just show the seconds. We'll come back to that problem later. So we can define as uh, we can define the status and make a, hori uh, a horizontal rule, and then show the agenda. So so agenda to show all the different agenda items, we just loop over the agenda's property. So we have this meeting number one, which is uh, and we can just show show in website, and then we can just click open that meeting. So let's just show the description of the agenda, right? So now we have two agenda items uh, that are shown here. Uh, in the next step, let's just show the uh, minutes of the meeting, uh, the attendees of the meeting. So again, we just loop over the attendees. And uh, we just show their full name as uh, since we have already saved the full name in our first session, second session. Probably. So after the attendees, we will show the minutes. And again, next to the attendee, we can show a check mark if they have uh, either accepted the invitation or not. So here we use uh, Frappe has again built in font thousand three uh, built in, so you can use check boxes. So here we are the check box then comes. So maybe we we'll just say like, icon OK. So that looks nice. So now you know uh, even who the, the, the details of the attendees too. Now let's just uh, make uh, quickly make some view for the meetings for the minutes. So there there we are. The minutes have been uh, posted. So that that makes a simple uh, minutes of the meeting uh, uh, template. Um, and automatically a generator. Now let's just add a breadcrumb so that uh, we can go back to the uh, listing page. So we haven't really created a listing page, so we have to create that too. So the listing page uh, will be meetings, and uh, if we define breadcrumbs, then that uh, what we really need is instead of breadcrumbs, we have to set. Uh, okay, we refresh it. The breadcrumbs will come. Uh, we'll have to uh, set the parents. So parents is. Uh, what will show the breadcrumbs for the meeting? 
So now we need the page for meetings. Uh, to create a page, we can create it directly in the www folder. So the www folder is what gets served as the pages uh, on, on your public website. So here we created a meeting HTML, a meeting spy, we can create a meeting CSS. So when you just sync, uh, uh, when you just run a bench sync www, it will automatically create a slash, it will automatically create a page for slash meetings. And inside the py file, you can write a get context method. So the get context method should return a dictionary with all the properties that you need to display uh, the uh, to display all the meetings. So again, we can use frappe.get all to uh, to just uh, get all the properties of the meeting. And let's quickly return uh, all of these as planned meetings. And then just loop all planned meetings and uh, display each on a new line using Jinga. So again, we are going to have two sections, one for planned meetings and one for past meeting. Uh, each with a slightly different status uh, status uh, filter. So in the meetings HTML file, we can uh, create a heading for the plan meeting and loop over the plan meetings property and uh, render each each meeting in a new uh, in a, as a new list item. Yeah, so we're just um, uh, showing the date and the prompt at two time in the list. So it will have two lines with one showing the name of the meeting. Uh, what we need to do is we need to clear cache. So uh, frappe.format is not the function. We use frappe. Get formatted doesn't exist. So what we can do is we can open jinja.py which has all the uh, available functions you can use in the Jinja templates. So there'll be, there is a format date function, so just call format date. So here we are, we have a list of all the planned and completed meetings in the, uh, in the slash meetings list page. Now let's just make it uh, look a bit nicer. Let's add a class to it. Uh, to add a class, we just add a .css file. Now we can add some white space to increase, uh, to increase the space between the meetings. And we also need to create a link so that when you click on the meeting, it should open to the uh, particular meeting. So we need to pass the page name property from, from the get context method. Can be slash meeting slash meeting one. Yeah. So here we have to, we just forgot that we need to also check showing website because only those meetings should be shown which have been set as showing website. Let's just sanitize this code a bit and create a get meetings function that we'll call for both both functions. Even in Jinja, we can create macros. So once we create a macro, uh, you can just uh, use a macro as a function. So for the representation of each row, which contains details about a minute, we can create a macro so that we don't have to do it separately for planned and uh, uh, for planned and past minutes. Yes, so, so here we are, we have a link also and then uh, along with the plan meetings. And similarly, we just copy and we create uh, past meetings. So we we'll refresh, we see a past meeting. So we should also add that if, the, if, there, is, if there are no meetings, then just show a method that there, is, there are no meetings listed or something like that. Just show a small or short message. So again, we can include adding the message in uh, so we can just create another macro which renders all the meetings. So the message generation is again common. So 
So, so now we have two methods, and then yes, we have a message that shows you know, meetings found, and when we click on a minute, we can automatically set. So let's just complete a meeting, and then let's just refresh to see if the minute has appeared, and so it shows in the past meeting. So that's it. That's generating web tools, and that's the end of our uh, web development training. Hope you liked it, and we are to stay in touch via the forums. Thanks.